But I tell you what, I never will forget my grandpa and a, a, the odometer. Uh, <laughs> oh man, uh, he he lived on a dead end road, and um, my grandpa was a very ornery person. Uh, he was, you know, he wasn't no troublemaker. I don't mean that, but uh, he was a bit now. He was a big joker. My dad's not. Okay. Uh, only the, the only bad thing about my grandpa, he he used GD all the God's name in vain all the time. I'm 11 and 12 years old. And he, he cusses in front of me like it's nothing. The only thing I had against my grandpa, I remember being nervous around him. But yet a good nervous because I knew down deep he didn't mean anything. Uh, he had a loud mouth, and so do I. So it's inherited gene. He was orphaned. He was orphan. He had a, and I'll get to that in a minute. But this odometer, he, now this is like about 1974, 1974, 1975. One time he showed me and Dad the odometer that he was forging. Uh, he, he, was, he had a little motor. Now, first of all, my grandpa was a mechanically, he was a genius. He had a, like a third grade education. He had to quit school because he had to work from daylight to dark. He was orphaned. He had, he had to survive. I guess they didn't feed him in the room, one room schoolhouse. I don't know the host, but I remember him telling me that he had to work from daylight to dark. And, uh, but this odometer, he had, he had a long, uh, in his garage, he had a long bench. Now, my grandpa was not stupid. He knew more about the law than the law knows herself. He knew he knew he knew then that the law either had to have visual contact, uh, visual visual contact. Yes, yeah, I'm saying it right. He knew that that law law enforcement had or that or the FBI they had to have visual contact or they had to have a search warrant. He knew that he lived on the dead. He lived in a perfect spot for this. Anyway, he took an odometer out of a car speedometer, and somehow he rigged up a motor. He ran it slowly, slowly, keyword slowly forward. Took two weeks. I remember him saying two weeks. Anyway, <laughs> Dad got under the bench. Dad made a mistake. He said, "Well, Daddy's he you know, to Grandpa." He said, "Well, Dad, why well, don't you just run it backward? It'd be quicker." And my Grandpa exploded. I never will forget this. So help me God. I was in the garage with him. Grandpa started cussing. You don't do that. You know, heavy language. He said, "You'll mess up the tumblers." Screaming. And uh, I'm sure my grandpa didn't mean to yell, but that was just his way. You know, that was his genetic uh, uh, gene. He couldn't help it. He, he screamed. He said, you'll mess up the blankety blank tumblers if you do that. Anyway, he said, just leave it alone. He says, let, let the machine do it. And he, he designed his own machine. In two weeks, he put the odometer, spinometer, back into the car, took it to the dealership, salesman seen low mileage, you know, of course fake, and Grandpa got a higher trade-in value. Of course, that's a federal offense, but again, Grandpa was not stupid. He knew all about search warrant. Again, he knew more, more about the law than the law knew themselves. But Grandpa had a very high IQ, and you did not mess with him. If he'd been arrested, he'd been smart enough to find a loophole to somehow backlashing and uh, file a lawsuit. My grandpa had a high IQ, very high. You just didn't mess with him. But uh, and one time he went into the bank of Verona, Kentucky. He banked there for years. My Uncle Roger went with him. <laughs> Scared the H-E double L out of my Uncle Roger. Next thing he knows, as they go into, this, into the vault in Verona Bank, I guess it's still there, back in the 70s. My grandpa takes the cap off and lays it on the camera lens and, and, and he says, and I quote, okay, Roger, let's rob the blankety blank place. And it scares my uncle Roger to death. Of course, he took his hat off the camera and went up to the teller and everybody knew him. He's cashing his retirement check he got from Ford's. I think he was retired then, medical leave. I won't go into that. But anyway, everybody knew him. He was just a big cut up. Trustworthy? Oh my God, yeah. He, he would rather die than you live. And, uh, I mean, uh, let me put it this way. If I was hungry, he would be over here before my own dad. 
I'm not Mexican. That's the way my grandpa was. If they were alive today and they knew I had any inkling I was hungry. Now, he may not agree with what I do here, how I make a living. He may not agree with it. But he understood. As long as you're making a living. But if, if he knew I was hungry, my grandpa and grandma would, been, he would be here in an hour and a half. One time I was sick. They called over the house just for, you know, they live in Walton Vernon. That's an hour and a half drive. I think one time we drove an hour and 27 minutes. Anyway, hour and a half. We lived over here, four miles up from here. I'm here at the library. I'm just out of the sun. I'm up around the curve here. See it? Yeah. Uh, anyway, I had the flu. I was about 11, 12 years old. And they called over here, Grandpa and Grandma, to ask if we had medicine. And Dad just went to the store. Dad spent $20 in medicine. And would you believe my Grandpa and Grandma wouldn't take that for an answer? They drove over here an hour and a half anyway to bring me more NyQuil, more medicine. <laughs> now comprehend what kind of grandparents I had that do that. Yeah, you know, he had a, you know, he had a, he had a rough tone to his voice. You would think he, you wouldn't want to mess with him, but he had a heart of gold. He'd do anything for you. He really would. And my water gun, oh God, he exploded on me one time for that. I was making him nervous. Going around, he was busy in the garage. Us cousins were outside playing, squirting each other with water guns. One of my cousins, I lost my water gun. Going around, Grandpa, I lost work, I can't find my water gun. Grandpa I was crying, he's 11, 12 years old. For 30 minutes, I was crying, uh, they stole my water gun, you know. 30 minutes, I remember, he had this nervous grunt when he before he exploded. He had this nervous grunt. 30 minutes went by, he let me have it verbally. I'll never forget what he told me. You kids are lucky. He's the cussing now. He always said GD. You kids are lucky. He said, you have parents. I never had no mom and dad. Me and Leland had to work from daylight to dark. I never will forget what he's yelling, you know. In other words, he's basically telling me to quit, quit my whining. I was getting on, he was busy. I was getting on his nerves. You know how kids are getting on your nerves. If, if, if they don't, if they don't uh, settle down, but I didn't settle down. I was hyper crying. He's, uh, I never, and he said, I work for, you know, we, we, they work from daylight to dark with a one plate mule. Ground, he said, ground as hard as a rock, blisters over your fingers. He said, we still had to steal food out of a farmer's garden to survive. He had a miserable uh, orphan life. His parents died. Their parents died when they was just infants. Miserable. Well, I'll never forget him telling me that. You kids are lucky. He says, he says, uh, you have parents. I never had no parents. Just, just, he blew up on me. And I don't think I was right to use that language just the way my grandpa was. I remember getting real nervous around him. I remember crying over him or crying because he's yelling at me. You know, he was just busy. And then later on, I remember uh, he went to the store and bought us a bunch of candy. After supper, uh, Grandma says, uh, Grandpa wants you out in the garage. He bought all kind of candy for us. So, you know, it hurt him to explode on me. But, uh, oh, we had Snicker bars. We had pop. You know, he was he was working. He said, you kids, uh, get what you want. He had a whole basket of candy. Pop, candy. So, you know, he, he, he had a... You know, he had a temper, but he, you know, he had a heart of gold. I, I miss him terribly. I really do. Uh, but that water gun, him, when he told me that, uh, oh, there, I can still hear it. It's been 40 years ago. I can still hear his voice ringing in my ear. I'm not making this up. You kids are lucky, he says. You, ha uh, you have parents. I didn't. Oh, I'll never forget that. Just the echo of my ear. I think I'd rather have had a Marine drill sergeant on me, even at 11 years old. Well, an hour later, snicker, snicker bars, candy, pop. 